The point is to have better players win as much as possible. It's a competitive game. If you're a serious competitive game, the better player should win. Welcome back. Beard here to drop some more Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge on your minds. Or just to complain about the bully that I've seen in this game that I just can't keep inside anymore. The overarching thesis of this video is that side decking in this game is straight AIDS now. What is the side deck, first of all? Almost every Yu-Gi-Oh player knows this, but for the uninitiated, I will explain. In Yu-Gi-Oh, you have your main deck of 40 to 60 cards. This is the deck that you start with every single match of a tournament. You have the extra deck, a deck consisting of special extra deck monsters of Fusion, Synchro, XYZ, and Link. Sometimes Pendulum, but for the most part, it's not Pendulum. And it's limited to 15 cards. And finally, you have the side deck or the side board in some games. 15 extra cards that you carry around your deck box that at between games, after each game of a match, you are allowed to switch them in and out with your main deck or your extra deck. For example, after game one, you want to side in some cards that help you with this certain matchup. You can side from 1 to 15 different cards. You can side the whole side deck if you want. I wouldn't advise it, but you can. Between your main deck and your side, right? So if you have, for example, an Ash Blossom in your side deck and you're playing against a deck that loses to Ash Blossom, you would side in the three Ash Blossoms, side out three other cards, and therefore the deck counts still stay the same, but you just get a better card for that matchup. This game mechanic is entirely designed to help stop non-games meaning the side deck will prevent things such as blowouts. It helps you side against floodgates because you can side outs like Cosmic Cyclone, MST, Twin Twister, and all that, or Harpy's Feather Duster if uh, a slow effect, a normal spell card will do the job, or it helps mitigate a really bad matchup. As we all know, all our decks have bad matchups except branded. At least this isn't the ideal, what it's supposed to serve. Unfortunately, the side deck isn't that anymore. It's become a tool of enabling degeneracy and not preventing it. Don't get me wrong, in some cases the side deck functions as intended still. Scenario time. I'm playing Brandon. I win game one because it's the best deck in the game. This is obvious. Game two, I know there's a 90% chance, because my opponent cannot out my board, will make me go second. I know for a fact they're going to side in floodgates, such as anti-spell, rivalry, or even grave of the ancient organism. This is an example of the degeneracy of the side deck. Instead of your opponent siding in cards that will help you going first or help you going second. For example, in your main deck, you have cards that are good going first and going second. They're diverse, but they're not, they don't specialize in one area, right? Like a Forbidden Droplets. It's more tuned for going second, but it can also go, be good going first. But post side, you can remove the Forbidden Droplets from your main deck and put in a card, if you're going first, a way better going first card. Or if you're going second, maybe a way better going second card. I don't know what card would be better, maybe Super Poly, right? But that is what it's intended to be, right? Instead of, hey, my opponent runs floodgates, so this way I can find a answer to the floodgate in the side deck. No, what the side decks become is, I know I'm going first, I'm going to make my board, and then I'm going to flip a floodgate on top of it. Essentially, FTK. Instead of my opponent siding cards like Impactful Traps, going first like Solemn Cards or Ice Dragon's Prison, my opponent will side in powerful floodgates, continuous traps and spells that will attempt to stop me from playing entirely and try to FTK me going first, resulting in a game two that lasts on average less than the last time you got lucky. Knowing this, I have to counter side and know that this crap is going in, so you have to side in your Cosmics, your MSTs and stuff like that, or else you just get blown out and you lose, which is not what the side deck was made for. In this scenario, my opponent isn't in the game for competition, for love of the game, seeing who's better, they're in for cheap wins which is what a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh has degenerated to. How can you get cheap wins? At every local that I go to now, everyone's running straight FTKs. And it's why I threw Gimmick Puppet in my deck. I didn't run it before, but I threw Gimmick Puppet in because I realized, hey, everybody else is being a cocksucker. So hey, here's this disgusting monstrosity on your field that totally tells you its effect is worse than its artwork. The thesis of the side deck now is, can I fit in as many FTK type cards as possible so that I can auto win? In the past, Decks would side cards that help you in matchups, but the sheer number of insane auto wins wasn't a thing. Raigeki, things are so good right now in terms of your options that Raigeki is not played. Raigeki, a card that says one for five, destroy all your opponent's monsters. One for six now, technically, because extra, extra deck zone. Back in the day, if someone sighted in Royal Oppression, it would work both ways. Hell, even the disgusting Vanity's Emptiness, both banned cards, would leave the field once a card left your opponent's field. So if you could just remove one card, you could win. 
Now, obviously, those cards deserve to be banned. I'm not defending those cards. Those cards are awful. I'm just saying there's more of them. All of these floodgates are a problem. And the side deck is their home. People use that side deck to run these degenerate garbage cards. Back in the day, cards like Debunk, Electric Virus, were viable staples in the Dragon Ruler format. Even things like XYZ Encore. And even if someone ran traps like Skill Drain, the format was so slow that you could reliably run Royal Decree or Trap Stun, of all things. Cards like Fairy Wind, Chain Disappearance, even Honest, made their way into the side deck in 2014 BA format. When was the last time you saw cards like this sniff the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh landscape? The last time you didn't have a gut and a neck beard? In today's game, you run three random floodgates, three FTK blowout cards, three other FTK blowout cards, six FTK hand traps for particular decks, or even FTK blowout hand traps like Dimensional Shift. We've combined AIDS with Cancer and like God knows what else into one card. Recently, people complain about the format being too diverse. I don't think the format's too diverse. Diversity in Yu-Gi-Oh is awesome. The problem is that there's degenerate floodgates and FTK crap running around that if you RNG step on this landmine during a tournament, there's your tournament run. You're you're going to lose one to two matches fair and square, even if you're a great player against good decks, just because there's other good pilots, other good decks. But then that third loss just randomly comes from, from RNG, landmine, BS. You just stepped on this, some dude's playing runic stun or something, and you just lose. Imagine that. You don't have to. You can fix this by removing all floodgates. Goes in, rivalry, other stuff should have been removed from the game. And then that would improve the health of the side deck, which is the thesis of this video. Ultimately, I, pr I propose removing all of these cards from the game. This is why I made the cringe and based Yu-Gi-Oh deck series. I was tired of decks that had no identity being hyped and viewed favorably when they just made generic board 237 and then backed it up with the flood game, blah, blah, blah. Removing this BS would result in a cleaner and more fun game. This would have ripple effects on the game resulting in Konami not needing to make archetypes that are broken beyond belief. Just to be able to play around these floodgate FTK blowouts and the game would be a much better place. At the end of the day, the point is to have better players win as much as possible. It's a competitive game. If you're a serious competitive game, the better player should win. And the RNG factor should be minimal at most. If you want to play slots, go play slots. We'll get you a nursing home membership. But that's all I got here. Tell me what you think of the current side deck situation, current side deck patterns. Are they aids? Am I overblowing this issue? Remember, if you disagree with me, you're a bad person and your mother doesn't love you. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other stuff here to satisfy your FOMO, and also like this video, please. And subscribe because it makes my nips hard. See ya!